Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again with another video, and this will hopefully be a fairly quick update in regards to the progress I'm making on the roster editing spectacular, at least the first version. Unsurprisingly, I've been asked about it a lot, seeing as that is what this channel has been built upon, roster editing and franchise mode. Like I've said in the past, this is something that I've done for 15 years now at this point, always wanting the roster to be in a much more realistic spot. And ever since I've been on YouTube, I've been, you know, sharing the information with you guys. And this year is going to be no different. There is going to be an editing spectacular. Unfortunately, it's not ready yet. And I don't know for sure when it will be ready. But to help you understand why, I'm going to show you the process that I've been going through as far as trying to get everything set up. So let's get down to it. The first thing you need to understand is that I haven't been able to put in a ton of work with the update because unfortunately prior to the November 22nd update online roster number eight, things weren't in a good enough spot for it to be worth my time. What I mean by that is every year, and a lot of you will know this, every year there are players who debut in the AHL. But unfortunately, that requires them signing different paperwork for them to be in the game. So whether it's an NCAA guy who's recently signed and debuted, he needs to sign new paperwork. Whether it be a junior player who was in the game last year, like Philip Zadina, who was removed and then added in once he signed that paperwork. Or Cole Lind, who still is not back in the game, I do believe. That's the big thing uh, that always kind of halts the first editing spectacular this year was no different as prior to this update there were 30 to 40 missing AHLers and for me that's not worth the extra time to add all of them in for the record online roster 9 was just a jersey only update that is the way they add jerseys in so you have to understand that I have only been putting in the work for the most part since November 22nd that is where a lot of missing players were added in and that is when it became worth my time Leading up to that, though, I was going through the process of adding in missing players. If this doesn't freeze, you'll notice a lot of names who were in the game last year. So a lot of these guys, I just took the same information I had down for them with NHL 18. Simply moved them over. Quick and easy process. Of course, some of them would have been added if they jumped to the AHL. But for the most part, you do have missing prospects, guys who are in the NCAA that EA simply cannot add in. And I'll go through all of these with all the info when we actually get to the editing spectacular. That said, that said, the big delay here. Now, I've been lucky with my back and forth being an EA game changer to have direct contact with developers and to be able to tell them, hey, this this needs to be fixed and this needs to be fixed and some of that information has certainly been used whether it be uh, the fact that the free agent list is fairly well cleaned up uh, there were a lot of junior players that from the first update I had them be like hey you might want to or I at least said to them hey you might want to pay attention to that and they listened thankfully but unfortunately the roster's still in a pretty bad spot and the best way that I can showcase that is with this Word document right here. This is the list of changes that I have made thus far. This information, again, will be available either through a Word document or via spreadsheet, especially if someone decides, hey, they want to put in the work for me spreadsheet-wise. These are the overall and potential changes, right? Right now, I have up through Pittsburgh done. So, obviously... There's a lot there in terms of overalls, potentials, certain attributes like lowering durability. There's a lot there. The big hang up for me though, the big hang up for me has been this right here. Everything you're going to see listed here is incorrect contract information as of that eighth roster update. Unfortunately, you'll notice that this bar is a little bit bigger than it should be because there is a lot of incorrect contract information in this current update. Whether it be actual numbers, one-way contracts being two ways, or in the case of David Backus, having one fewer year than he should. DeBrusque's contract is lower than it should be, and every bit of this does matter. It has a butterfly effect when things like this are wrong. You know, you let the Bruins off the hook, 
of an extra year of David Backus's contract, that certainly affects what trades they can pull off, how they handle free agency in the first few years. Every little thing like this matters. It truly does. And to have this much incorrect info, to me, is simply inexcusable. I mean, again, I have only edited, in fairness, this is at least through the NHL. I have yet to go through the AHL, and this is a big reason as to why there is a lot wrong. So, you factor in that it's only been since the 22nd that I have been able to edit. You factor in a lot of incorrect contract information and the fact that there is just simply a lot to do, especially when you factor in that so much in the NHL is wrong. So for me, I had to go through every player currently listed on the NHL, make sure the contract info was correct, then also go back through, change things up in terms of overalls and potentials. That doesn't factor in that I've yet to go through the AHL. I have to go through the CHL to see if there are players who are under contract currently in the CHL, because if they are, they don't appear within franchise mode. So I'll see if I can find an example here relatively early, hopefully. Lang, who I think is under contract with Minnesota still. That's at least who he was drafted by. So he still has one year left on his deal, right? If he's actually still with Minnesota, within franchise mode, he's a ghost. He doesn't appear because the ECHL does not have integration within franchise mode. So he's a goddamn ghost. The only way you can actually get his contract to factor in the franchise mode is to put him on the Iowa Wild. So that is also Jesse Gabrielle of the Bruins is a perfect example. So I have to sit there and go through contract information. I have to make sure that every player is where they should be, that players in the ECHL are actually on AHL teams. I have to go through team depth charts, see who is missing as far as prospects and who's worth adding into the game and who isn't a lower end guy. Then I have to go through junior and make sure that players have decent overalls and potentials, or at least accurate overalls and potentials as they should, so they factor in. Especially with the guys who are 15, 16 years old now, because there's no development before the draft. So I have to make them more draft ready. Then I gotta go through the European leagues and double check for that. There's a lot that I end up doing here, and clicking on franchise mode is not what I wanted. So you factor in how much I've done already with adding in a ton of players, and this is not nearly all of them, unfortunately, but you factor in adding in players. You factor in having to go through contract information, having to double check organizational depth charts, changing overalls and potentials to be more accurate. It's a very time-consuming process, especially with roster sharing not being a thing. It's it's frustrating. It's frustrating because it is. <laughs> That's, I, I don't know. I'm trying to be nice about it. Because it's, it's tough, though, because flat out, they have done a better job with updates this year, but that's immediately erased. Like, it doesn't matter that you're being more consistent with roster updates when there's this much information that's wrong. I'm one person. I do this every year, and I can get it right. Why can't they? And that's kind of why I do this. I'm not necessarily sitting here being like, hey, hire me, I'm looking for a job, but it's to hold them to a higher standard of if one person sitting at a desk in his room can get the roster into a better spot than what they can, what's their excuse? And of course, I'm not talking about the NCAA players that they can't add. I'm not talking about the KHL players that they can't add. Again, I'm talking just about simple contract information that they're getting wrong. And some might say, oh, they only got two players wrong on Vegas. Two players is two players too many. Let alone the fact you look at Washington and how screwed that is. They're inconsistent with when they decide to round up and not. It's just, 
Oh, boy. It's just extra work that I'm not a big fan of having to do. So, to answer the question of when the first roster editing spectacular is coming out, because normally I do two. I do a in-season update and an end-of-season update to carry us through to the next game. I don't know. I thought I might be able to finish it by the end of December, and maybe I will. Uh, for those of you who follow me on Twitch, I know I stream late nights, but for those of you who follow me on Twitch, you'll know that I've been editing this on stream. Uh, I try to get at least one to two teams done a night. More often than not, it's just one because we get a little bit sidetracked. But again, I'm through Pittsburgh, so we're in the home stretch of NHL players. But then we have to get down to the AHL, and then it's double-checking. There's still so much to do. And in a way, it's tough to stay motivated when I already see that there's been so much wrong with just one league, and I have so many others to go. I still have more players to add into the game. When will the first update be out? I'm hoping by this time next month at the latest, but I can't make any promises. I just want you to know, though, it's on its way. It's on its way. As I am going through these updates, I am sending this information out to EA. So hopefully for future roster updates, all of this is changed and it will save you guys a whole hell of a lot of time and you won't have to make as many changes. Of course, with overalls and potentials, that's all subjective. I have my opinion on how it should be done. And it's basically based off of the information EA gives us as far as how they set up overall ranges for like first line forward, second line forward. Matter of fact, we can go back to that. I mean, the formula is pretty straightforward. I mean, again, you look at, you know, you look at what a first line forward is designated as a second line forward. It's pretty straightforward in terms of what overall range somebody should be in. But yeah, the point is there's still a lot to do. I wanted to give you this update. Just know that the update is coming. When, though, I have no idea. But I do thank you guys for being interested enough to uh, keep asking. I'm not annoyed by it by any means. <laughs> and if anything, it encourages me to be like, oh, okay, yeah, some people still care, so I should, I should probably keep up with this. Just give it some time, because it's going to take some time. We're getting there, though. We're getting there. So that'll do it for this one. Thank you. I'm going to stop rambling now. Have a good one. Thank you for supporting the channel, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.